Ashan Sundra's presence, who will be leading and teaching. Um, at the end of the session, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions, uh, but otherwise we'll be muted throughout most of the proceedings, apart from the questions and answers. We'll be doing some opening chanting, which will be led by Ajahn Sundra. Um, for welcome to join in. Uh, there will be a share screen of the text, so you can join in if you wish. I'd just like to say a few words um, about Ajahn Sundra for those who might be new to the class and new to Ajahn Sundra. She's originally from France and was one of the first of four women to join the monastic community at Chithurst Monastery in 1979 as an eight precept novice. She became a Siladhara, which is a 10 precept arms mendicant nun in 1983 with Achan Sumedho as preceptor. And from its inception, she helped to establish the nuns community at Amaravati Buddhist Monastery. From 1995 to 1998, she continued her practice mainly in Thailand in forest monasteries and has been teaching and leading meditation retreats worldwide for 30 years. And currently she resides at, um, resides at Amravati Buddhist Monastery, which unfortunately uh, due to the COVID restrictions is not as accessible as it normally is, but hopefully when things improve, uh, it's a, pl a place, a, a monastery really worth visiting, very special, quite a unique place. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Ajahn Sundra for joining us and coming to teach and hand over to her to lead the chants. And Wang Du, very kindly in the background, will be um, managing and supporting the event technically. And uh, Imogen will be uh, very kindly making the requests uh, for the five, three refuges and five precepts on our behalf. So I hand over to, to you, Ajahn. It's all yours. Thank you. So um, we can start the evening with the <clears throat> with the uh, a short part of the evening chanting or the sorry it's the morning chanting actually because uh, it, you have English and Pali right next to each other so I think it's good to have both and so we'll do the beginning until Namutasa yeah and then afterwards we will take the five precepts for those who are uh, you know who wish to. You know, to sort of take the five precept. You're very welcome. I'll give them to you formally. So we'll start now. First of all, we bow three times to the Buddha. <clears throat> you. <clears throat> Yo so bhagavahara to the blessed one the Lord who fully attained perfect enlightenment so akato ye na bhagavata dhammo to the teaching which he expanded so well Supatipano ya sabhagavato sawakasango and to the blessed one's disciples who have practiced well Tamayam Bhagavantam Sadhamam Sasangam to thee the Buddha the Dhamma and the Sangha Ime hi sakare hi atalaha alo pite hi abipujayama. We render with offering our rightful homage. Sadhu no bante bhagawa sutira parini butopi. It is well for us that the Blessed One, having attained liberation, Pachima Janata Dukampamanasa, still had compassion for later generations. Ime Sakare Dugatapana Karabute Patinganhatu 
May these simple offerings be accepted. Amha kandi garata hitaya sukaya for our long lasting benefit and for the happiness it gives us. Arahang Samma Sambudho Bhagawa The Lord, the perfectly enlightened and blessed one Buddham Bhagawantam Abhivatemi I render homage to the Buddha, the blessed one Sawakato Bhagavata Dhammu The teachings so completely explained by him Dhamma Namasami I bow to the Dhamma Supatipanno Bhagavato Sawakasango the blessed one's disciples who have practiced well, Sangha Namami, I vow to the Sangha. Handamaya <coughs> Buddhasa Bhagavato Pubha Bhagana Makaran Karuma Se Namu, sorry, Narata Spe Primary Omesh to the Buddha. Namu tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Namu tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Namu tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Now we go to the precepts on page 126, I think. So, um, Nick, you will you be? We can take the text away from the screen. It will be Imogen will be. Sorry, requested. we go to the net. Yeah, to the precept. That's right. Well, we you, you are going to do the um. The Metta Sutta. Um, or do you want to save that for later, just in case? We can do the Metta Sutta afterwards, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, Imogen, would you like to request the three refuges and five precepts? On yes. our behalf, on page 126. Thank you very much. I am Aetisaranena um, Saha. Pancha silani achama Dutiam pi maya maiti sarane nasaha Pancha silani achama Tatiam pi maya maiti sarane nasaha Pancha silani achama Namo tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Namo tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Namo tasa bhagavato alato samma sambutasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa 
Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samha sambuddhasa Buddham saranam gachami Bhutam saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Dhammam saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Sangham saranam gachami Dutiyam pi budham saranam gachami Dutiyam pi budham saranam gachami Dutiyam pi dhammam saranam gachami Dutiyam pi dhammam saranam gachami Dutiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Dutiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi budham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi budham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi dhammang saranam gachami Tatiyam pi dhammang saranam gachami Tatiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Tatiyam pi sangham saranam gachami Ti saranagamana ni tuitang Okay. You say sadhu, you can say sadhu, are you? Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. Now we are on page 129. All right. For the five precepts, 129. That's right. Panati pata veratmani sikapadam samadhyami. Anati pata veramani sikapadam samadhihami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. I undertake precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adina dana veratmani sikapadam samadhihami. Adina dana veramani sikapadam samadhihami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumichachara veratmani sikapadam samadhyami. Kame sumichachara veratmani sikapadam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musawada veratmani sikapadam samadhyami. Musawada veratmani sikapadam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Sura me raya majapamadatana we ratmani sikapadam samadhyami. Sura me raya majapamadatana we ramani sikapadam samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs, which leads to carelessness. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs, which lead to carelessness. Imani pancha sikapadani silena sugatinyanti silena boga sampada silen nani butinyanti tasama silam wisotaye. So I say it in English because I think it's important to hear it too. These are the five precepts. Virtue is a source of happiness. Virtue is a source of true wealth. Virtue is a source of peacefulness. Therefore, let virtue be purified. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay, so we've taken the five precepts, you've taken the five precepts, and we continue with meditation. Sit comfortably. Okay, and we'll do about um, 
half an hour meditation, yeah? Half an hour, 40 minutes maybe. So sit comfortably with your back upright. Make sure your knee, your your chin is slightly tucked in, so your the back of your neck is elongated as well as your spine. You close your eyes gently, and in yourself, you you have an intention that this is a time of formal practice now, and unless you have really uh, you fear you could be damaging your body if you did not move, uh, stay remain as still as you can yeah physically so that you um you know you can see uh if you have any pain i just want to make sure you understand that if you have any pain you wait a little bit before you move to see whether it's initiated by the mind or initiated by a reality of maybe your body needing some attention all right so closing your eyes gently you enter your body yeah. you are hopefully you are comfortable enough to hold the posture long enough without too much trouble and for the next few minutes just take a look at the general feeling of your experience right now are you feeling um, tired jaded um, upset about many different things you know just a kind of lens a kind of weather of your mind body as a sort of more like an intuitive feeling you don't go to and analyzing everything anything just uh, like looking at a picture rather than analyzing a, a text inwardly and this is a time for you to really help the mind to Slow down, calm down, and let whatever come up comes up. For right, right now, just leave it, leave it, it, leave it to itself. Whatever arises right now. But as you are looking from the, you can do this through the from the top of your head down to your toes, your feet. You can just what we call sweeping the body you sweep the body slowly noticing any particular tension or any particular feeling of um, you know feeling of pain feeling of stress any tightness any many parts of our body we don't really pay attention much to to them but they become alive when we bring mindfulness onto them. So this is a very good way of connecting with your body and the life that courses through your body, the energy, the, the sensations. Maybe you feel heavy, maybe you feel light, maybe you feel happy, or maybe you feel depressed, down. So gently, we approach the meditation with a very kind heart. You welcome your mind and body with metta, with loving kindness. And you can use this um, sweeping through the body as a way of centering yourself into the present moment because the body is an object here and now mindfulness brings you into the to the moment to the present moment so you have all the conditions to remain aware here and now
Don't think of, of, of meditation as a as an activity where you have to struggle and find something that's not there or get something that you can't find. You know, just to relax. It's complete relaxation exercise. You have your spine up. You're holding yourself upright. That's enough to keep the energy awake. Or at least a supportive condition to keep your energy awake. And then the rest, just let the mind-body relax. Feel your shoulders going down, your shoulder blades just drop. The muscles relaxing. If you have a lot of activities going through your mind, don't worry about it. That's what the mind do, does. You know, mind, the mind is, you know, is very active, especially if you've been working all day or you've been uh, busy with things. It that's what you bring to your meditation, the mind as it is, not a, a, a sort of an ideal of a mind. You just bring your world that your mind is creating and remembering, anticipating, fearing, and so on. So for the next few, a few more minutes, just stay with the sweeping, stay with that. Just feel, you know, the torso, the legs, the arms and feet and so on. The neck. You can don't have to follow in exactly this. You can just have your own pathway. But traditionally, we do that from the top of the head down to your to the feet, with no rush. Nowhere to go right now. Just stay, just to stay here and now, connected with the body. Then you can, after you, you know, once you've gone around inside your, yourself and be um, mindful of the sensations and the feelings and the, let you can drop that if you want to, and you can just open your attention, your awareness to simply seeing being conscious, being aware of the arising and the passing away of what we, what we call the candors, the passing away, the arising and passing away of body sensations, the 
the physical body, the perception you have about things arising, the perception maybe you feel tired, maybe you feel ex happy, or it's like seeing life in a certain way. And you have also a whole world of thinking and creating stories, remembering your stories, creating new ones for the future and so on. And the last one is the sense consciousness. So you have the contact with the body right now, consciousness of the body, contact. The body is manifesting a lot of physical sensation, emotional sensation, feelings, and so on. You know, so you just you don't look for something. What whatever arises, the mind just does it by itself. You don't need to look for what's arising and passing away. Just all you need is a very still mind to see the movements of the mind. You don't need to be the, the one looking for something. You can drop that. Or doing something. It's just like a silent witness. Bear attention. This is how you can be f become really familiar with the uh, one of the three characteristics of all phenomena the Buddha talks about. You know, anicca, impermanence, directly with the eyes of the. Awareness All that is needed is a, a still watcher You could say that's why the skillful means of having one object at a time is a way of just gathering again that intention to to give us a still and steady foundation for the mind to observe the its activities or maybe no activities maybe peacefulness And through this practice, you learn to receive everything. I say everything, truly, with kindness, with a full acceptance of your life. A warm receiving of your life, friendly.
if your mind gets lost in the activities of thinking or reacting to things that you don't like or just you don't need to entangle yourself with these things just for now just think of now thought will easily take you back into the, the past and the future into a time-bound reality so you can just as soon as you see those thoughts you you will notice that they actually go if you struggle if you want them to go or you want to hold them back you know if you struggle it's more obvious when you struggle to let them go you can't do this it will just you will be holding them in your mind so the only way to let go is to relax it's to stop being a doer activating this activating that just be a, a, a bear attention witness that is quiet that is caring that is true that is completely embracing your life as it is without being entangled in it embroiled in it Notice any tension. When you notice tension, this is a time when you can bring your awareness on that feeling of tension and you can see if you observe it without any goal or without any idea about it, you will begin to see the 
fluid nature of this sensation of these experiences. Anicca is really you know, it's it's a quality of all this all we experience, not just on the external level but internally. Everything is changing constantly. Everything is moving constantly. We don't need to be frightened, things move on. So now you gently open your eyes and stretch your legs or your back. You can stand up and move around. We had a couple we have a couple of minutes, okay, of pause for you to maybe have a glass of water or something or come back after a couple of minutes, two or three minutes.
Все. Namo tassa bhagavatu arahatu summa sambutassa Namo tassa bhagavatu arahatu summa sambutassa Namo tassa bhagavatu arahatu summa sambutassa Buddham dhammam sangham namasami <coughs> So it's always a, a pleasure to be with all of you. And um, <clears throat> just to also see so many people wanting, you know, sort of interested in practicing this path, which is, of course, for me, uh, uh, has a jewel like quality, you know which is, is, is a path that is really simple to, in terms of ideas and concepts and you know um, we may be inclined to write books on Dhamma and to talk a lot about Dhamma but the actual practice itself is incredibly simple what complicates things if, if we find it difficult it's not so much the path that the Buddha left behind, but it's it's more you know we more we become aware that <laughs> I used to say wherever wherever a human mind turns it tends to complicate things. Reality is more simple than the interpretation of our mind. <laughs> so it's good to be on the path that really has such a healthy approach to the mind itself, you know, such a kind of clear and uh, un sort of um, uncluttered, you know, understanding of what the truth is, you know. We're all looking for something that is, makes sense, or looking for something that is truly inspiring in our life and I certainly find you know uh, it might not be everybody's um, sense of life but for me there's something that makes me inspired to live to be in a you know part of this human life is the, because of having this path of liberation and I uh, trust when you I hear teachers, you know, who invite uh, their student to not complicate things because um, that's, you know, the simplicity is not just being simplistic, but just seeing as they are is not a, a, a kind of um, an act of, you know, thought training. It's a direct seeing. That's what the beauty of this teaching it's like you're looking at a painting called life, right? Sometimes it has a lot of, uh, you know, maybe it's very tumultuous and lots of rainstorm and uh, flood and things, you know, and at the other time you've got the Mediterranean with a beautiful blue sea and people happy and sunshine and holiday and nothing to do and enjoying life. So our life is just the same. Our mind, the world that created through our through the mind, the chitta, you know, it's just the same. It has its own life. You won't believe, would you, that the mind has its own life? <laughs> it's good to know this because the more you know that the mind has its own life and it needs help, the more you touch into the domain of humor. <laughs> You start 
you begin to to see life as a kind of you know a, a tragic comic you know i mean it's not just one or the other it's a tra tragic and comical at the same time to listen to one's mind and its agenda and its view on things and its perception and its feeling of being right and wrong you know of being best or worse or maybe you have uh, you know all the all the ideas i mean the mind is a creative force you know it will create anything you want almost well not everything but a lot of things <laughs> and so you know for for a long long time people don't are not so interested in actually looking at the nature of the mind and seeing the mind as it is. People are more interested in getting very concentrated and very doing another things, you know. They, they, they want to make their mind as it is, you know, as they think it is, as a vision, an ideal of, uh, of what they think it should be. You notice that in yourself? You check, you know, you, 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 you consider your meditation to be successful when it's calm, empty mind, peaceful and all that. You say, hooray, I've really done it this time. Then your mind is full of shopping bags, you know, it's full of meals and full of people and full of cars and full of irritation and pain and, you know, full of tragedy and also all kind of thing and then you feel oh my meditation is a mess i'm really a mess well this is where you know the misunderstanding you have the understanding of avidja at that point you see <laughs> i'm bringing avidja not mara at the moment you know but i'm very interested in the fact that we don't we talk about avidja but we don't see it as another character in our life do you understand this, the, the avijja is the, the part of us that doesn't know the Dhamma yet. You know, it doesn't see clearly, it doesn't know clearly, it doesn't understand clearly. And so, you know, we, we, we tend to have a, a lot of ideas about how life should be, how my mind should be, how my body, how my, what, whatever, you can find anything in your life, how much idea, how many ideas you have. Now, you're going to say, well, if I don't say that, maybe I shouldn't really be thinking so much. I shouldn't be doing so much of that. You know, maybe already you have a second agenda, which corresponds to what I might have said just now. But actually, each one of us have to discover this. You know, you can take anybody's agenda as yours. You know, what is common to all of us is maybe we are interested in moving from delusion to non-delusion. <laughs> That's a common ground. Maybe you don't even know what delusion is. You know, we don't know delusion because if we knew, then it wouldn't be a delusion anymore. Delusion is like a mystery, isn't it? It's an old thing you don't know and you don't understand maybe. And we sometimes it's called incon the unconscious, subconscious and so on, you know. So many things. I remember when I was a young, uh, when I was an Anagarika, I, I, I think I'm committed to simplicity because my mind is quite compl compl complicated at times, but it's learned, it's learning the lesson. I mean, over years now, it's learning to trust truly simplicity. Nothing works better than simplicity. It doesn't mean that you, you know, you delete the complexity of your mind or your life. No, it doesn't mean that. It means that you have a, a solid refuge in awareness which doesn't complicate a thing. It just sends you the wisdom to know how to simplify your life and your way of being. Do you understand? So we don't have to change things. They change by themselves. They change by themselves when they become redundant. You know, it's like the Buddha did say somewhere in one of the suttas, you know, that when he was still a bodhisattva, a bodhisattva, you know, before he became a Buddha, giving up things was not such an easy thing in the way he speaks, you know, he says it wasn't something he was really so enthusiastic naturally. But when he found something that was more satisfactory, 
that was more really something that he he wanted, you know, that seemed to more pleasant even or whatever. I mean, this is I'm talking and inter- you know interpreting what he said. You know, that when he finds something that was better than what he had, then he gave up what he had easily. Do you understand? And in the meditation, that could you know that would mean once you get tired of something, it just drops away. You don't have to you don't have to you know battle and struggle and hate these things, thinking that's going to solve the problem. No, what's going to really liberate you from things you find you know. Uh, you know, imprisoning you instead is the fact that you make peace with all these things. You make peace with your life, you make peace with your mental states, you make peace with your feelings, you make peace with your stories, you make you start receiving life as a you know as a gift of learning rather than a a monster that comes and takes your happiness away. I mean, I'm talking very broadly and generally. You can apply it to details after that, you know. But you 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 learn to see life as a as a grand learning process, an amazing schoolroom classroom. Sorry, an amazing classroom. And your classroom is your mind, and and you know, <laughs> and your mind is a learner, is the one who learns. The classroom is a mind, life, you could say. You know, not just the mind uh, in a narrow sense, just the mind that you're part of, you know. So, you know, when you when you look at, uh, you know, what's going on now, it's 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 very disturbing for many people. It's very, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of tragedies in our societies have taken place over the last nine months nearly a year. And so there is an atmosphere which is quite difficult to be part of, to bear. It's quite, you know, unpleasant. So where is our refuge when we feel that life is not, you know, what we hoped it would be, what we wished it would be, what we expect one day it will be, or when we moan and lament on how it has been. <laughs> it has been like that, and it will be like that, and I hope it will be, and I hope, you know, so many movements of the mind that gets very agitated through not understanding <laughs> the fact that even though it might be exciting to look back into the past and to look into the future there's no problem you can do what you want with life as far as the teaching is concerned you take each one of us takes take responsibility for what how we lead our life but certainly once you get to understand that being in the present moment is just not a an idea it's actually being in the in, in the place that is not only peaceful but it's where I would say to my, myself, it's where the only refuge of reality I know. I trust. I completely, I, don't, I, I cannot depend on anything. But one thing I trust fully is awareness. Now, I've no idea what awareness is as an object. Don't ask me. You'll never find anything. But I see just a result of being in a refuge of awareness. And that's what you need to understand. What are the results on your life when you are more awake? When your mind can be seen. Once you see your mind, it's already a step, uh, a big step between the mind that's completely engulf in itself and the mind that is being seen through the power of awareness. It's two different things. Awareness doesn't have any ideas or any views or any judgment or anything on what's going on in your life. It just enables you to touch base with a much bigger reality. 
to touch, uh, to touch um, the sense of no boundaries, a life of no, without boundaries, a life without fear, a life without anxiety, a life without a trusting life, which is so beautiful to trust that life when you touch base with it is your friend. Life is not an enemy. Even when things are b bad, you find life brings you helps, helps, many helps, many supports. I know it sounds a bit maybe airy fairy, but it's true. <laughs> I've witnessed it many times, you know. If you stay open, if you stay trusting, you don't have to have a God, or you don't have to have a, a, some kind of entities above the human realm, the human realm, you know. Life is a big mind. <laughs> and so if you open your mind to that aspect of life, then you find that you, you, friends come along, situation comes along, you know, the, something unknown to you turns up. Many, many little things come to show you that you're not alone in this life. Now, when you're alone, you really feel alone and miserable. And it's easy to say for me, it's easy to say you're not alone and you're, but you feel very alone. So. How does a meditation come into our life at that moment when you feel alone and miserable? And somebody says, no, you're not alone and miserable. Misery is anicca dukkha you know, it's impermanent, not self, and uh, dukkha, and <laughs> painful. Right? So meditation is here to see two things. It sees you in a completely dilapidated state. <laughs> <laughs> completely lost and you know unhappy and with meditation you have a little bridge with awareness that is uh, is just not moving there it's still listening aware of this despairing mo mood that's what meditation is helping you to connect with the reality of the whole of your life not creating peaceful thoughts and blocking everything so that the world doesn't bother you anymore. Do you understand? Thoughts are also impermanent. So if you block your life, if you block your life for a few hours, it will pop up again. <laughs> it, will, it won't let you down. What you have to do is through understanding that there is a possibility of being still within the disastrous moment of your life or difficult moment of your life, then what happens? This comes with a sense of trust, a sense of love, a sense of appreciation of life, even when it's bad. You know, that's why m most religions are pointing to this. Don't lose your heart when everything is gone, you know. And it doesn't mean you're not going to feel like I want to kill myself, quote, quote unquote. I'm not, I'm not advising anything. <laughs> it just means even when you feel, you know, really awfully down the, the, the black hole, you know, something in you is still watching, something in you is still connecting. I've seen that. I've had this, I've had this experience, you know, where I was in the to as a nun, you know, many years ago, I was completely despairing, disgusted, you know, sort of in a state of this is hell, this is absolutely hell. But there was this witness, you see, I knew I never lost contact with a witness. And I I can tell you a little story that what happened to me, because it might inspire you, I don't know. It's a small thing. I had to go and teach the day after, to go to bus the day after to teach a retreat. And I was really, I went through a very dark moment. I was very upset about something, basically, you know. And uh, as I was, you know, decided I wouldn't eat much anymore for a while and I would stay on my own dark room, you know. And, and what happened? Yeah, I didn't want to see anybody. And what happened? <laughs> 
you know, suddenly I was eyes closed, and so in my mind, it was suddenly my mind turned into a kind of light bulb, but it was all black, like shiny black white bulb. bulb. And you know what was in this dark white painted bulb? A little blue window. There was a little blue... I, I'm not somebody who has a lot of image or vision. I mean, not, not now, not these days. <laughs> And I didn't think I was one of those particularly, but I had this little blue light, blue window at the top of that light bulb. And I didn't understand at first, you know, I just was watching it. And as I was watching it, what came to me, and I don't know if it is true or not, but I thought that was very, very appropriate. <laughs> he said, that blue light, Sundara, is your dukkha. Don't tell me if it is true or not, but I understood intuitively this, you know, even it's all dark, what happened? I don't know, it was an, an intuitive thing, you know, it seemed to me that what I saw as totally dark and horrible and blah, 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 you know, kind of swimming in that awful feeling of despair was actually, in reality, a door to liberation. Do you understand? And it was blue. Normally, my door to liberation is gold. I call it the golden gate <laughs> or the golden door. And my four golden doors are the four noble truths. So these are my best friend, you know, the four noble truths. <laughs> Suddenly, when I was talking about the golden gates, I realized people reminded them on the kind of, you know, the bridge in San Francisco. <laughs> Anyway, they are. So that image came just to tell me that you are suffering, Sundara, but your suffering is also that blue window. And that window was the, the, like an opening to the big sky. Do you understand? Often the mind is compared to the sky. So I, I knew straight away that blue window is showing me that sky, not the, the sky we see every day. But the, the fact that we are this guy, you know, we are this big space. And so this is what you need to understand maybe with meditation. The path of liberation is taking you to this beautiful uh, knowledge, you know, little by little, right? And sometimes don't fear tests, you know, you don't ask for them. You don't wish them. You hope they'll never come. But when the tests come, begin to see them as something very precious. I'm not joking. Something precious. Because either you sink with them and you die of despair, or if you stay with them with awareness, something else is going to come along. Do you understand? What has always come along is often its opposite. Something turns up. You don't expect it. You don't particularly want anything. But you, you are learning a very deep lesson at that moment. So when things get difficult, either in your family at Christmas time, or children, or your husband, wife, dogs, cat, carriers, all that, Use these moments of testing to see the power of awareness. For you to realize the power of awareness. There is wisdom there. There is energy. There is, you know, you don't need to have a doer. You find something, you find, you're walking, you're doing something. You did not know you will be doing five minutes before. It's like you're guided by life, in other words. But to be guided by this life, you need to be attentive and vigilantly mindful. You know, otherwise you miss it. You you go back to your grumbling mind. <laughs> Instead of opening the window and look at the new vista, <laughs> you kind of crumble with another cup of coffee and a crumbling mind and a grumbling mind. So. 
I'm not really, you know, wishing for you anything but happiness and joy. But often they they kind of, you know, complementary in the sense, uh, not the happiness and joy, but the difficult moment with a joyful moment. They don't, they're not very far from each other. As many of you have experienced, I'm sure, already in your life, and you're not seeing anything new. So I will leave you on these few words. And if you have, this is a time for questions. At the moment, there's only one question in the chat, so don't feel shy to ask more. In fact, it's not a question. It's saying, <laughs> it's, an, it's a gesture of respect. <laughs> okay? So don't feel, um, you know, as I say often, your question will be helping not just you, but also the people who hear the discussion around this question. So feel free to put the question into the chat box or you can <clears throat> unmute and ask the question directly, if you prefer. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Arjun Sundar, it's John Tear, Oxenhall. In. Oh, how lovely to see you. <laughs> nice to see you again after all these years. <laughs> and to hear that you're still active and alive and bright. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> we're, um, we still have the meditation group every three weeks. And we're doing it on Zoom at the moment, which is... Uh, Wonderful. Not quite the same, but it's very useful. Yeah. Anyway, good wishes. But um, I'm just coming in maybe to give other people encouragement to start asking questions. Because as you say... If somebody asks a question, it's very helpful to other people as well at the same time. So I'd give others encouragement. But maybe a question just to start us off on that is um, difficult times at the moment with the COVID situation, a lot of self-isolation. But what I'm picking up talking to a range of people, that although there are difficulties, at the same time, there are many benefits. Because what it's helping people to do in many ways is to slow down and just to reflect inwardly, but also to see the nature of nature around them. Um, quieter times, more space, opportunity, just to see the sky, the birds, the changing weather, as well as their own changing moods. Mm -hmm. So I'm just introducing that as a possibility for you to say something about it and maybe your own experience. Yes, well, you know, the monastery is incredibly calm at the moment. We have nobody coming in, more or less. And so, I mean, we have some people can actually, uh, you know, uh, people want to offer a meal or want to offer, you know, not, uh, food for the monks and nuns. Uh, there is a corner of the monastery where people can offer the, whatever they want. And it's a bit separated, so nobody is, you know, in, in a position of catching anything. But what is uh, very wonderful is that um, the monastery is very still right now. And, um, you know, as far as I'm, I am concerned, uh, I've spoken a little, quite a bit on COVID. That's why, John, I haven't said anything too much, you know. <laughs> My last few videos, I always spoke, uh, you know, brought COVID in the, in the, in the, in the midst of us. So um, I think that's one of the joy, you know, many friends I know who, um, you know, spend time in nature, I mean, if, if, in parks, if they are near parks, so they can, and they, they have to, uh, we, they, you know, I said that again before, that this time is bringing us not only to witness the beauties of nature and, uh, you know, and the fact that, uh, we have slowed down and people are, we are all, you know, all um, in a way pushed into going back to the real um, and important things in our life, you know. 
because there's, as we know, uh, you know, there was a time where there was so much death and so much people sick, and it was so tragic, you know, from the the the, the patient to the doctors, nurse, cleaners, and all that, you know, all the people living in, spending whole day in the hospital and just imagining anything like that that would be it would be really um you know absolutely staggering to 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 imagine that people could um, face that you know i'm in a lovely kuti i'm in a beautiful place of marwati and i receive alms food every day i mean i'm in a divine world already i call it you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, COVID, COVID has this uh, time has enabled people, I think, to, for one thing, to appreciate their life maybe more, even when it was difficult. You know, the fact that so many people are, you know, we don't appreciate our life a lot of the time because we're so busy with other struggles. You know, we have struggled due to COVID, but also uh, a lot of the time in life we don't realize that we are part of a continuous battle, you know, with uh, ourselves and life, stress and tired and, uh, you know, fighting this, fighting that, you know, unhappy with this and that and so on. So we very rarely do we have a chance to slow down and to actually uh, take stock of what's happening in ourselves, in others and so on. Just, you know, you feel so much part, you know, the news when you look at the news, it's like, you know, it's it's definitely life has become global, not just in business, but also in in life and death, you know. It's a global life, it's a global uh, experience now. We all share that with this pandemic, you know. And so um, I think it's a, it's a very special time and, uh, and a time, you know, I don't... I don't, you know, so many people are suffering through this time. You can't just sing too, you can't sing too much the happy, happy days, you know, of COVID because there's so many people suffering right now with a lack of money, a lack of fund, a lack of, you know, doing what they want to do, even just to survive, you know. So for me, I, I am always, um, you know, uh, yeah, you can, for those who have enough, fund and can work and uh, are not kind of confined into a house with too many people maybe some of them might be infected and so on you know but there you are I go back to meditation myself you know that's what my job here is to really encourage you encourage you to um realize that in this time there's one thing we can do is take care of our mind and remember, our mind is a creator of our world, okay? And the world we live in is who we think we are, you know, a lot of the time. So to be able to look at our mind, you know, as nature, part of nature, Dhamma, look at Dhamma, which means also nature, and turn the mind into a free space, this is really a great bonus in our life because it doesn't cost anything we don't have to go anywhere and we are with this classroom all the time how you know that's one of the great aspect of buddhism of the life that you can bring straight away in this day and you know right now today and hopefully you have brought into your daily life for the last nine months well thank you for the question john Thanks, Esther. Good to see you, even if it's virtual. <laughs> yeah, and give my greetings to everybody there. I shall indeed. Thank you. Okay. So, we still have about 10 minutes. Well, almost 10 minutes, unless we chant the Karenia Meta at the end. Ajahn Sundra. Yeah. Carola here. It's lovely to see you. <coughs> lovely to see you, too. <laughs> Um, I was thinking what you were saying about uh, meditation and the mind. Yeah. But I'm finding the last few weeks, mm -hmm. the mind is making so many stories, I completely lose awareness. Uh -huh. And it's really difficult. I'm either embedded in ridiculous stories or I'm falling asleep. And the, the awareness just 
seems to disappear most of the time. So I wonder if you have a anything to say about that. Well, you know what comes to mind. What comes to mind? It's interesting. Uh, when I was a laywoman still, you know, before I became a nun, I remember, <clears throat> I was reading, of course, one of my favorite person was Krishnamurti at the time. I was, I, I loved his writing because it, for me, at that time, it was just, it seemed spot on. And I tell you, this is related to your question directly. Whatever he said <laughs> struck a real chord in me. And he said one day, many things, but he said one day, thoughts are fear. Mm. Okay? Don't need to believe him or me. Mm. You know, and then I experimented. I was so passionate about this past. I, I didn't know I had a past, you know. <laughs> I was walking on something. I was passionate about discovering what this mind was about, I guess. My life was about <laughs> And um, I remember experimenting, you know, when do I think most? And when my, my thinking stops? And it's interesting. I didn't label my, my thought fear necessarily. But one thing I noticed is when I was happy and relaxed, my thinking will go down by about 80%. And when I was worried, anxious, and this and that, and fearful and so on, my thinking will just, you know, pile up. And so when you said that to me, it seemed like something in you. It's not you, do you know? It's not you. Remember, your mind, in a way, you discovered your mind is not yours. It does its own thing. That's why it needs training. So your mind is actually just having, a, you know, a, a field day because you let him speak as long as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> He's just really happy. It's all right, you know. It's all right. Um, gosh, I remember the... Carola, is that it? Your name? Yes. Carola? Yes. Ooh, got yes. it. Oh gosh. Carola, you know, <clears throat> your mind is really happy. Gosh, I can see what I want now. But awareness is what you're interested in. You don't you know, the, the first part is not to shut down your, your thoughts, is to take back the ref to go back into the refuge of awareness. Mm. And then you will see that you're st <laughs> I'm kind of you know, I get I see a lot of singing images. I see all the thoughts going back, slightly miffed, you know, and really disappointed because the light of awareness has been shown on them and they're losing their power. <laughs> but it's so hard to keep that light of awareness. It sort of disappears so easily. No, that's what you think. Yes, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't disappear. Awareness is there all the time. But we get absorbed into something else, that's all. When we get absorbed into the sense world, we've lost awareness. We're just concentrated on the sense world, but we're not aware, it's different. But Awareness is something that's not so easy because we always feel that we are pulled away from something we're interested in, do you know? Mm -hmm. You know, pulled away. I mean, when I became, you know, I told that story a few times to all of you, you know the story. I remember when I was aware that I was, I was enjoying making, making fun of people and telling stories and making everybody laugh with my stories and so on, you know? But then at some point, my, the awareness or my awareness or whatever you want to call it, you know, I, you know, awareness is a big world. So through many experiences, I began to see that I could not make fun of people anymore because it was always at the expense of somebody. Do you understand? So at some point, I had to give it up. <laughs> which took me a, a, a quite a bit of, of strain because 
naturally, out of habit, I would just go, you know, easily go back and tell another funny story about someone. <laughs> but eventually, compassion won. Compassion and mindfulness won. No, I can't make fun of people. It's not kind. I had to give up my personalities side of my the side of you know one side of my personality which was to enjoy making f fun of life and, and making people laugh and that's not easy mind you my sense of humor hasn't dropped but <laughs> no it doesn't no it doesn't that's the beauty no you don't lose your sense of humor that's part of dhamma i think the dhamma is humorous you know <laughs> You yeah, have so many situations that have been so funny. They were only funny because I was aware of my life. Do you understand? So to come back to you, Nicola. Carola. Carola. <laughs> she came back and then it went. I actually remember your name when I became more mindful of me. And I said, what? When you were talking, you said, I must remember her name. Okay, well, <laughs> I came back. I came back. But when if I'm mindless, you see, I forget it. <laughs> so... There's nothing, I mean, you've been meditating for a long time, so you know what to do, really. But what you need to realize, maybe go deeper than your thinking, go below your thinking level. Find out what's below this. Maybe there is stress, maybe there is fear, maybe there is agitation. Do you understand? Go to the body, go to the feeling, go to the sensation. And then you will find that your thought will feel they've lost the plot. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So it's nearly eight o'clock. And I know you have, you know, we can stop there. Of course, me being here, you know, I, I have time, plenty of time, and I don't want to press to to say anything, you know. But if there is another question, I'm happy to answer, to to discuss it with you. I know, you know, we have friends like Nick Carroll and our Tibetan friends helping on this uh, session, so I don't want to delay them either, you know. So, I I can see there is no. Oh my God, there's three questions. <laughs> I hadn't seen them. I was so interested in answering the question. Gosh. Oh, somebody's somebody's in Italy, in Rome. Agent Sango. Okay. There don't seem to be a question. Oh. Okay. So, do you know, I'm happy to carry on in a way, uh, but before I say that, I want to find out from my friends, Nick and, ooh, and Wango. And Wango, that's right. So, how do you feel about that? There's about one, what, two, two questions. It's all your sister. You you decide. <clears throat> we'll just go along with whatever you choose. And Wangu, where are you? Yes, absolutely fine, sister. You're okay, yeah? I'm okay, yes. All right, all right. Let me see the question then. Um, how do we create an environment of understanding? That's a great question. And the other one is... Regarding awareness, I think it is something to practice. We do this when we meditate and hopefully at other moment increasingly, increasingly where helpful, where, W-H-E-R-E. -E. So I'm not quite sure says where as a verb or as a location. <laughs> so let me see. The first one, how do we create an environment, an environment of understanding? Um, could you, 
um, maybe um, the person, could you expound a little bit of what you mean by this? Because it's all a little bit general there. Hello? So it's a private question, but the voice can appear and you can have everything closed. Is a person gone, maybe? Possibly. Huh? All right. So we pass, we go to the next one. Regarding awareness, I think it is something to practice. So um, is a person who... Okay, well, I, this is for everybody. I can speak to everybody. And maybe I go back to the first question later if we, if we, if we want to. So... <clears throat> You know, if practice, again, do you see when you say you practice, all right, what does that mean? You know, regarding awareness, I think it is something to practice. Regarding awareness, it's something to, re to, to begin to notice. You don't have to practice awareness. You have to practice a lack of awareness. You have to train your lack of awareness, not awareness. It doesn't need you. You have to train yourself to remember there is awareness. And awareness is not an object, it's not a thing, it's not some, it's, you know, there's, there's no name for it. That's why Ashen Sumedho used to tell us, you know, you can only describe it as a, through the negative, you know. It's not something limited, it's not something, you know, it's a deathless, it's a not you know, limitlessless, timeless, and so on. So it's, it's, you know, you get to know it through your meditation, through mindfulness. You know, as you cultivate mindfulness, it takes you to, at some point, the breakthrough to see that, you know, you are this awareness. You are, you know, and for a long time we think we are the body and the mind. And I mean the brain, or the, the skull, <laughs> with these things in there, with all the brain. You know. So, um, yeah. Awareness is something to remember, and mindfulness is a tool to remember awareness. It's a tool, do you understand? To be here and now, you begin, to, it's like a reality you need to discover yourself. It's a reality you need to know by yourself. And you know this by yourself when you begin to see how many times you forget yourself. You forget yourself to be present. You forget yourself to use the capacity to listen inwardly. You lose the capacity to uh, slow down and speak from the heart rather than, blah, 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 you know, like that, which all oh, we've been through that, you know. Get excited with the brain, thoughts, and so on. You begin to see a realm of existence, of non existence, <laughs> that seem to be connected with something that really attracts you, you could say. Attracts you. It's like a, a it's like a what you call a magnet. A magnet. It's called a refuge in Buddhism as well. You know, refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha. Refuge in the awakened one, which is the Buddha and oneself also. You awaken, your awakening, your baby awakening and then you have, um, you know, the Dhamma, which is the truth. And then you have the Sangha, which is uh, the spiritual friend or the good friend. Or uh, in French, it translates it as admirable friend. So, you know, admirable friend, great friend. All the people who practice the past that you love so much. You know, that we all, I think the past is difficult not to love it after you discovered its treasures and its gifts and its capacity to enable freedom and liberation from your delusion, ignorance. Isn't it a wonderful past? Now, you know, I'm teaching you right now, and you say, Oh, she's always inspired like that, Ajahn Sandra. You know, is she? I wonder, you know, she's always bubbly and, you know. No, I mean, I'm just like you, like the way you look like now. Sometimes, you know, I'm tired or I am 
you know, I'm a human. It's being human. It's not being in a kind of happy, happy, clappy mode all the time, you know, looking that everything is okay and I know exactly what to do all the time. No, that's not that. Dhamma is not that. Dhamma starts with you being human and completely imperfect. Okay? It's imperfect in terms of the path of liberation. You're still bound up with your de delusion, your greed, your hatred, and so on. So it's not perfect, and you know, <laughs> that's what the Buddha meant. Not perfect yet. <laughs> Perfection is a full liberation. So, you know, we learn f from our imperf imperfection. Now, when we say that, we might feel, oh, yeah, that sounds good. You know, I'm so glad I can like my imperfection now. But the hardest thing is that once you, <laughs> once you like your imperfection, that doesn't stop there. You have to start loving and being at peace with everybody else in perfection, don't we? Don't you think? Otherwise, the mind is clogged up a bit again. It kind of, you know, it kind of filled up with thoughts of this and that and emotion of this and that and so on, you know. Perfection is not an empty mind that forced to be empty. Perfection is a peaceful mind that has doesn't need thought anymore. It doesn't need this, you know, the, the, the candles to, you know, function all the time. I mean, are you not... <laughs> You're not this. Uh, what do you call that? You're not uh, disembodied. You know, you're not disconnected from life. It's just you realize that you have more time where the mind can do, can do things without having to think. You know, um, madly about life. You can actually do things. That's why the women got so misunderstood for so long, because they have a, 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 a you know they have an intuitive um, you know potential and capacity which is far far uh, stronger, powerful than men. Unless men have become more feminine nowadays, you don't know what men and women anymore because there's so much meditation, there's so much, you know, the new generation, they, they, they're they kind of, you know, we share both sides. The women become very strong and, you know, really kind of confident like the male used to be in the old days, you know, 50 years ago or something. And then the, the men become much more soft and gentle, you know, just kind of no sort of, oh yeah, with gentle voices and nothing, you know, even when, in, you know, usually, you, you, I shouldn't say that, no, I'm going to refrain from doing that, because it's a video, it's going to be public, so I have to be careful what I say, <laughs> even though it could make you laugh a lot, but never mind, I have to be restrained. So, yeah, so I hope I've said enough, you don't need to train, you know, you don't need to train to get... To, to discover the awareness. But what you need to train is your mind to not forget that it is in awareness. That's, uh, it, in a way, you, I think people discover it because this word awareness is just a word. Remember, it's only a concept. Where does that leave you? How can you describe it? What is it? As I said, timeless, deathless, not this, not that, not this, not that. You can't see what it is. So, what I discovered awareness, I think, at the time I had no idea what it was, but when I began to realize we had a very, there was an aspect of my mind that was very silent. I never knew that I had a silent mind. <laughs> it was always busy on the go somewhere, you know. I never knew. <laughs> I had, I remember the time, sometimes I think about it, I had an agenda all day. There was not one moment where I wanted to, you know, do nothing. If I, I had to do something all day, you know, good and helpful, it's not, you know, but I could not imagine myself stopping. That's really difficult, you know. I couldn't imagine stopping, except going to bed <laughs> and cooking, maybe. But <clears throat> what brought it to me you know, before Avion, Avion was a nun, is I got really, really impassioned with a silent mind. It seemed like something really special about this silent mind. I did not know what it was, but it seemed to be very alive. So I did retreat, for example, in Christian monastery. You know, I wasn't a Christian particularly, but I had... 
you know, like one way of being silent and listening to what it was and how to discover the power of a silent mind. You know, John Coleman, I don't know if any of you know him, he used to be a famous meditation teacher, American, good friend of the Sangha, very dear friend of the Sangha. He brought us the first cat to the nuns at Amarawati, the first cat we had, which, who we called Muni, the silent sage. But anyway, let's not be <laughs> kind of diverge. But he wrote a book called The Silent Mind. He was a great meditator himself, you know, a great teacher. So this silent mind does exist. <laughs> and that's one way of discovering awareness, I think. Because in this silent mind, you also come across the part of you that is not aware and that is crowded with all kinds of things. And I think at some point we get bored and tired of this crowdedness. And we, we are ready to discover the silent mind. That's what brought me to become a nun in the end, you know. Not that I wanted to particularly, but it seemed like a natural inclination of the heart, you know. So that's enough. And then for the, uh, to create an environment of understanding, uh, well, the, the person is not there, this understanding of what? Understanding each other, I guess that must be something like that, of understanding, accepting each other. I mean, you know, at some level I know what this person means, but I don't know what he means fully, completely, you know, fully to be able to go embark on a long, maybe, discussion with this, with a person who is not even here. So I think we'll stop. Or is anybody interested in that question? How do, how do we create an environment of understanding? Does that speak to anybody? No. All right. Well, in that case, we're going to, it's a shame, I know it always happens, unfortunately, we're going to cut on the Metta Sutta. Maybe we don't have to. Some of you have stayed, so why not? Do you know the Metta Sutta? Wangbu? Wangku? Wangu? Shall we have the Metta Sutta? Yeah, this is a, comp a teaching, a most famous teaching on compassion in the in the suttas of the Buddha's teaching, and so it's in Pali and in English. Yeah, here we're going to do it in English this time. Okay. <clears throat> so now let us chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright. Sister, you are mute. You're mute. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> okay, we'll start again. Now let us chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise will later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be at ease. Whatever living being there may be, 
whether they are weak or strong, or meeting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another, or despite. It's on 39. <laughs> Page 39. In English, that's right. Let none deceive another, or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as the mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings. Radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outward and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness. One should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. By not holding to fixed views, the pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being free from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. So, I think we can end this evening with this beautiful chant. And I wish you, well, I won't see you for a long time, huh? Because we have a winter retreat on the 3rd of January for three months. And next you have Nick coming to wish you a Happy New Year <laughs> at the end of the the year so um, I just wish you all the very best and having please um, take care of yourself in terms of protection and uh, do the best you can to not catch any of that virus and you know for me I think it's good to send meta to the virus that's what I feel instinctively because it doesn't help to bring hatred to think even things that kill us okay right the virus is doing its own thing and we're doing our own thing too so may we all be well and happy all right <laughs>